How are you this day? I want to welcome you to Broadmoor Community Church, a church that believes so strongly that no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. I'm Reverend Ann Covich, the senior and lead pastor here, and it is my privilege to be in ministry with and to the people here, as well as to all of you who are online, our online congregation. You are an amazing group of people that I hope at some point we'll get to know one another, whether it's on Facebook or Zoom or whether we do a FaceTime or if you come to visit. We have worship at 9.30 each Sunday morning. We currently are meeting outside in the Glen and we're asking people to bring their own chairs, but you don't have to. We'll, we'll take care of you. We've got rocks to sit on, that's what I've got on right now, or we'll give you a chair. In September, we'll be changing our time, so stay tuned for that. I know that you probably saw the slides that rolled just before I came on. I hope that you will check them out right at the end of the service because they talk to you about the small groups. We have three Bible studies. Two of them are carried out by me, and one of them is men's only. So I hope that you will check those out. We also have a youth zone for our kids 6th through 12th grade, and we have uh, Spark Time, which is like our old-fashioned Sunday school, um, during worship on most Sundays, but not the first Sunday. First Sunday, we worship together. I also wanted to invite you, if, if you are in time of trouble or pain, if you would just simply like prayer, please contact me. Those are on the slides as well. You can get my email or you can call the church. I would be honored to be your prayer partner, to pray for and with you. We have several ministries that continue. Our outreach ministry is phenomenal. We have a partner school just down the street that we have been working with their back to school items. We also have some neighbors that we meet with that are just down the street. Um, those are for our homeless and economically disadvantaged folks that we serve meals to. And then right here in our own space, we have a preschool that is not ours, but they do meet right here and they have been here for almost 25 years. So all kinds of ministries are happening here. We also think that it's super important to minister to and with those folks who show up in this place, whether it's once a week, once a month, or once a year. You are invited to participate in those. You can give online, 719-309-4498 is our text number. You can go to our website, which is www.broadmoorchurch.org. You can mail in a check at 315 Lake Avenue, Colorado Springs, 80906 or you can come and drop it right into the offering basket. Please know that all of those different ways are ways that you can participate even when you live far away. And thank you for your generosity. Thank you for allowing the ministries of Broadmoor Community Church to thrive, to survive through this pandemic, and to continue into our future. And now I invite you to take a deep breath in and let it out, knowing that God has met you wherever you may be, that God was there before you got there, and God will still be there with you when you get up to move. This is the day that our God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
Let us pray. Holy and loving God, our life is in you, in you in whom we move and have our being. Help us to open our ears to the blowing of your spirit. Help us to open our eyes to the blessings of your world. Help us to open our hearts to the people in your world, the people around us. Help us to open our lives so that we can be your people in this place and in this time, moving wherever it is that you would have us go. We pray these things in your holy and amazing name. Amen. Hi, friends. Good morning. It's Miss Liz. How are you today? Do you want to know how I am? I am exhausted. Yeah. Would you like to know why? Well, I've been running around all morning looking for God. Yeah. And I just, I don't know. I, I can't find God. I first I went outside and I looked up in the sky, like way, way up. I thought maybe God is in outer space. That didn't feel right though. So I went on a long hike. I went way up a mountain. I thought maybe this is where God is. That didn't seem exactly right either. So then I figured it out. I went to church. I thought this has got to be where God is. Yeah, but that wasn't quite it either. I mean, I was reminded of God, that was good, but still, I felt like I was missing something. So I went back home and I listened to the scripture that you're gonna hear in just a minute, and I figured it out. God is right here. Yeah, right here with me. That's what the scripture tells us, closer than I can ever imagine. Even if I can't remember, even if I can't feel it, God is still there. And God is right there with you too. I promise. Yeah. And the scripture tells us that God is what makes us alive, really. Yeah. That God is what gives us life and fills us up, whether or not we remember God is there. Pretty amazing, huh? So next time you forget where God is, see if you can keep that in the back of your head, that God is right there with you. Let's say a prayer. You can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for being close. Help us to remember that you are so near to us. Thank you for your love. Amen. Bye, friends. I'll see you soon. Today's reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 17, verses 22 through 28. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you wish as unknown, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor, he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth. And he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him. Though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him, we live and move and have our being as even some of your poets have said, 
for we too are his offspring. In him we live and move and have our being. In him we live and move and have our being. Make a joyful noise, sing to the Lord, tell of your love, dance before him. Make a joyful noise, sing to the Lord, tell of your love, Many years ago, at a conference annual meeting in Indiana, I met a young computer whiz who for the last several years had been working at Best Buy on the Geek Squad. Kayla was a deeply committed Christian. She was exploring what it might look like to witness in her workplace. Now, we don't use that word witness very often in our denomination, but isn't that exactly what it's true when you share the good news of God's love? She wanted to share that with her unchurched 20 and 30 something friends. Now I was fascinated as she described how she and her friends understood church. Forget church on Sunday morning, she said. Rather, meet your friends for sports and games on Sunday or even Saturday, then maybe go out that evening. These were her words. Meet people on their own terms and at their own places rather than expecting them to come to your church. Wow, could have knocked me over with a feather. Kayla was a modern version of Paul at the Areopagus, which was a small rocky hill just northwest of the Acro Acropolis in Athens, which by the way, meant Mars Hill. More importantly, the Areopagus was the most prestigious and venerable council of elders in the history of Athens, so named because it met on that site, dating back to the 6th century before Christ. The Areopagus had laid the foundation for Greece's eventual democracy, and across the centuries it had changed, so that by Paul's day it was a place where matters of the criminal courts, law, philosophy, and politics were adjudicated. Paul had made an unexpected visit to Athens. His proclamation of Christ crucified and risen had angered the Jews at Thessalonica so much that they had followed him to Berea to incite the crowds there. And rather than risk Paul's safety, the Berean believers had sent him on to Athens. There, while he waited for his colleagues, we heard this in the scripture, he was waiting for them to join him. He took in the sights. He toured the city and he tried to learn something about its people. He could not possibly have missed the multitude of city shrines and altars dedicated to a variety of idols. And he debated their existence with whomever he could. I'm sure he was sort of a pain. He was in the synagogue with the Jews and in the marketplace with the buyers and sellers and in the town center with intellectuals and philosophers. And on the one hand, these folks ridiculed him as a babbler, a seed spreader who was just passing along secondhand out of date news. However, on the other hand, these Athenians loved to learn, so they invited now I put that in quotes, invited, he was probably in handcuffs, or at least escorted by guards. They invited Paul to the Areopagus to explain his strange ideas. At the Areopagus, Paul gave his only speech to an entirely pagan audience. There, he appealed to their religiosity and complimented them for their continuous search for the divine Paul was slick. He told them that he understood their altar to an unknown God as a search for reaching for the divine. And then 
He told them that he wanted to help them know this God. People are still reaching for an experience of the divine in our world today. And the question is, have we, all of us, who follow Jesus, help these folks in their search? Have we offered them that for which they search? At our worst, at our worst, we Christians have isolated and insulated ourselves from the culture. Too often we allow ourselves to be inward looking, self-absorbed, self-important, and instead of engaging people at modern day Areopagus, we stay inside. But at our best, at our best, Christians can be just like Kayla, the computer geek, remember her? Living and learning and sharing the good news of God's love in the marketplace and in church settings, in bars and boardrooms, in coffee shops and in church fellowship halls. We, like Paul, can exemplify an Areopagus faith. We too can move with God out of our sanctuaries, out of our enclaves, out of security. And we can instead welcome the opportunity to meet real people where they live, work, and think. We can gain a hearing for our own strange ideas about God and Jesus, about forgiveness, about grace, and about the lives of resurrection when we have an Areopagus faith. With this philosophy, the Veritas Forum was created. Its stated mission is decidedly Areopagian. We seek, they say, to inspire the shapers of tomorrow's culture to connect their hardest questions with the person and story of Jesus Christ. The Veritas Forum has brought the Areopagus to people like you and people like me in over 80 major universities. It incorporates performances, lectures, music, films, seminars, and debates in interactive formats intended to encourage rather than suppress honest dialogue and debate. How many other people have become aware of the leading of the Holy Spirit and have claimed that faith in other Areopagus sites? Paul knew that when one is sensitive to the leading of the Spirit, one must constantly change one's method in order to keep the message relevant. In Fort Worth, Texas, home of the stockyards, two Christians allowed the Spirit to lead them to their own Areopagus. Billy Bob's, the largest honky-tonk indoor rodeo in the state. That's where they went. And there they began to share the good news with hard riding, hard drinking, hard living cowboys. Today, there is a national network of cowboy churches that gather for prayer and song and the word. Amazing. And in 2005 in Atlanta, a retired minister, Reverend Wood, came out of retirement in order to help a historic church that had declined precipitously. He helped them find its Areopagus faith in a Starbucks. He said, I prefer a traditional service with choir robes and the singing of hymns, but church is not about me or about what I want. It's about God and making the gospel relevant to the culture. Most of our new members, he says, have no desire to worship in a large sanctuary like ours. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not who they are. And if we insist on them changing to embrace our worship style, he says, they wouldn't come. The church has tried that for 40 years and it wasn't working. Whew. Paul struggled with how to carry the good news to the Greeks and Romans. However, he did not insist on wrapping it in the Jewish tradition in which it was founded and in which he was comfortable. Instead, he learned to change his delivery without changing the message. He never watered down the story, but he told it in different styles and he got results because the church spread like wildfire. Paul believed 
that there is no person or sphere of influence outside of God's care and God's concern. All of life, and not just the sacred, can and does participate in God's loving presence. Paul viewed the Areopagus as just another place where the God of all creation had gone before him and was already present. Indeed, said Paul to the Athenians, God is not far from each one of us. When we stop reaching so far in our search for God and claim our Areopagus faith, God's Spirit will allow us to find ways to maintain the integrity of the gospel message in new and exciting places to folks who are searching, looking for God. How might we share God's amazing love to the seekers all around us? How will we help people outside our own religious subculture hear and understand the good news of Jesus the Christ? How will we use the culture to reach the culture? Paul changed his methods, but never his message. He moved with God. Can we do the same? This is an exciting time. Where is our Areopagus today? I wonder. As we come to this time of prayer, I am sitting in the prayer room here at Broadmoor Community Church, and you're sitting in your homes, or at a friend's house, or in a car, or on a train. But no matter where we are, let us go to a time of prayer. We'll begin with a little bit of silence. Lift up your joys and your concerns to God, who hears them all, and then I will do a prayer for the people, and we will finish with the Lord's Prayer, as you will find on your screen. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for this time and this opportunity to come, to talk, to be with you. We ask God that you would help us find solace in the places that we are most troubled and help us share that solace with others that are around us. And we ask God that you would help us see the abundance of our lives, that you would Help us to recognize the blessings in our beings. Holy God, we come to you this day with concerns on our hearts and joys on our lips. And we thank you for the opportunity we have to say what is in our hearts to you. We also come with concerns of the news that we continue to hear about, the natural disasters, the forest fires, the wars, the acts of terror in Afghanistan, the worries that the people on the borders on both sides have, whether or not they'll be able to get to a loved one's home, whether COVID has shut the borders again. Holy God, 
We ask that you would be with those leaders of our state, our country, and our world that they would put aside their own desires and their own wants, and that they would instead hear the cry and the clamor of your people to make decisions that are best for your people. Help us always to do justice, to love kindness, and most of all, God, to walk humbly with you. We love you, God, and we pray the prayer of your son, the son that you sent because you loved us so very much. And we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are moving in the light of God. We are moving because God's Spirit guides us, pulls us, pushes us, directs us outside of our comfort zones and into a place where we can share God's good news of grace and love with everyone we meet. Go in peace. Ooh. Mm -hmm.